Today we are going to see strain analysis in ideal ductile shear zones. So this is the topic strain analysis from ductile shear zones which are ideal in nature and then with time I will be also talking about the real shear zone and how the strain varies across such shear zones. To start with we will take the help of continuum mechanics or fluid mechanics. Why? Because ductile deformation does not lead to breakage of material material flows so the ductile deformation of the rock can be closely approximated but not equated with fluid mechanics. Now we consider these two parallel yellow lines as the two parallel planes which are dipping towards the right hand side direction. The dip of the plane is theta. Imagine that these boundaries are rigid and there is a fluid which is inside which is incompressible which means it cannot be compressed and the density cannot be increased. The Poisson's equation of rectilinear flow of an incompressible fluid and here we are considering Newtonian viscous fluid through very long parallel rigid boundaries. These are the very long parallel rigid boundaries is given by this differential equation del square u z del x square. This is the z axis where is the y? y axis is perpendicular to the z axis. We have chosen that the z axis is equidistant from the two boundaries. For that this equation is true and even if I take the z axis over here on the yellow line then also the equation will hold true. And when I say that z axis is equidistant from the two yellow lines that means if I take this coordinate as 0 minus y0 that coordinate will be 0 y0. That means in this case I am considering the thickness of the channel or the thickness of the shear zone to be 2 y0 units. Now back to the differential equation del square u z del x square. Where is the x axis? x axis is here which is perpendicular to the board and is not shown in the diagram. Del square u z del y square. u z stands for the velocity of the fluid along z direction either this way or that way is also possible. Since I have chosen the positive direction of the z axis in this direction. So positive uz will mean uh, flow in this direction and a negative uz value will mean flow in the opposite direction. Opposite direction means here the down dip direction and here the positive z values, positive uz values will indicate a flow in up dip direction of the uh, channel. Now we are considering only the flow along the yz plane. Indeed this green board is the plane where we are considering Consider that we are going to have some deformation or flow where no flow will be taking along the x direction. So therefore del square uz del x square will be 0. How the uz varies along x direction that is going to be 0. There is no such flow actually. So therefore this Poisson's equation will be simplified in this way. This term will be out and this much will be there which I have written. What is in the right hand side? Mu is the dynamic viscosity or the viscosity of the Newtonian viscous fluid which is present here. What is del P del Z? Del P del Z is a change in pressure along the Z direction. This means suppose at this point I use some instrument and find out how much is the pressure existing and at this point I find out how much is the pressure. The pressure difference will guide a flow either in this direction or in that direction. Say this is a high pressure zone, this is a low pressure zone. Then from higher towards the lower pressure fluid will move and if this is the low pressure, if this is the high pressure zone and this is the low pressure zone then fluid will go down. And there is also another tendency of the fluid by its own due to its own weight to move down in this direction. Now what is D? D is the density of the fluid which is present here. So that if I do mu divided by d that will give me kinematic viscosity though we will not use but I just thought of referring. G is the acceleration due to gravity theta I have already said is to be the dip of this plane which is dipping towards right hand side. Now how this equation will work I am going to demonstrate. So 
after putting this over there this is the simplified form let me also explain what is the unit of del p del z here del p del z is a pressure term involved pressure is equal to stress or is force per unit area del z z is the length unit so f divided by a multiplied by 1 by l what is the force it is mass into acceleration and then divided by area is there 1 by l this mass can be stated to be volume multiplied by density and then this is acceleration so this volume will get cancelled out by area multiplied by length so effectively what comes out is rho multiplied by f the density multiplied by the acceleration so in this del p del z basically the unit will be like the density unit and the acceleration unit see the same thing is happening over here d is the density of the material g is the acceleration due to gravity so it is not that uncommon things are kept inside the third bracket both of them have got the unit density multiplied by the acceleration in case of the natural shear zone the total this magnitude has been worked out like say 1 to 5 kilo bar per kilometer if i write in this way from the literature kilo bar is a pressure unit kilometer is a length unit but anyway if you uh, try to break and finally one will come out with the density multiplied by the acceleration term now why this del p del z minus dg sin theta this has to be understood by del p del z we mean a fluid flow either this way or that way and imagine the fluid flow is in this direction dg sin theta is the component of the flow which is going towards down down deep direction and inside the channel for example if the channel is horizontal like this theta becomes zero and dg sin theta becomes zero then the effective pressure gradient this we can call as effective pressure gradient effective pressure gradient becomes del p del z imagine theta equal to 90 degree such as the salt dome case say there is extrusion of salt happening through this stem in that case the channel is vertical sin 90 is equal to 1 so the effective pressure gradient becomes del p del z minus dg and in subsequent lecture i will come back to this salt dome issue for sure and we will see the detail but for the time being this is the understanding okay now let's see how we work with this equation as the working principle will be demonstrated it will be easy to explain thing consider that the thickness of the shear zone is 2 y 0 unit which i already told you i take this coordinate as 0 minus y 0 and that coordinate as 0 comma y 0 so the total thickness of the shear zone is 2 y 0 units now consider at y equal to y 0 that means at this point the uz the velocity of the fluid is equal to u1 and how to give the u1 velocity i can shear this boundary parallel to itself i mean a shear force with a velocity of plus u1 that's what i have said and at y equal to minus y0 where is that point it is over here imagine at that point the velocity of the fluid uz along z direction is equal to minus u2 what does this mean this means that in this direction opposite to plus u1 direction opposite to that direction this boundary itself is shearing a shear stress or shear force is generated suppose the boundaries are slipping u1 and minus u2 the boundaries are not coming close to each other such a deformation is known as simple shear deformation in structural geology okay so now keeping this in mind 
Now we come to this equation and we can integrate twice and we use the boundary conditions. This is one boundary condition, this is the second boundary condition. Then we come out as uz, the velocity along z direction is equal to 0.5 multiplied by the effective pressure gradient then y square minus y0 square remember y0 is half the thickness of the shear zone or the channel we are thinking plus 0.5 y multiplied by y0 inverse u1 plus u2 the sum of the velocities with which the boundaries are sheared plus u1 minus u2 you can put a question why i am putting minus u2 for here for opposite direction of movement it can be proved possibly i will prove with this lecture itself if i take this slip as plus u2 some of the deductions will come which will violate the common principle i will be demonstrating okay so this is the velocity now how to work with this so this is the center origin basically 0 comma 0 and from this equation i put a question at y is equal to 0.3 y0 how much is the velocity uz? What does this mean? This is the total y0 distance and multiplied by 0.3, it's like one third. Say here, at this point, how much is the velocity of the fluid, the Newtonian viscous fluid under such a situation? Then, what to do? Here I will put y is equal to 0.3 y0. The moment I use, I will get a definite value of uz in terms of y0 and then if I take a value of say y0 is equal to 2 kilometer further quantifying I will get a magnitude of uz provided I also know the effective pressure gradient which I said in the geological case can be 1 to 5 kilo bar per kilometer and once we put these values we have to be careful all the units have to be in CGS of course then I will get a uz value in CGS unit. Further in this deduction we are assuming that we can think like there is a pressure gradient that is driving the fluid in this direction. There is a tendency of pressure gradient to push in this direction. This pressure gradient push from bottom towards top is given by the del P del Z value and what is the dg sin theta basically a component of weight of the fluid that is trying to go downward and their subtraction is the effective pressure gradient. Now, this can be a positive number, this can be a negative number, we will see them one by one. Another interesting point, we see this a quadratic relation because there is a y square term and there is a uz term. So, it is a parabolic profile, I, I can draw after a while and in this parabolic profile, suppose the vertex of the parabolic profile having a coordinate y1 comma z1. In that case, it is possible to deduce applying the standard formula that the y1 coordinate is so much and the z1 coordinate is so much. Applying the standard formula from the quadratic equation, how to find out the vertex of the parabolic profile. Now we are in a position to draw the velocity profile. Now, from this big expression, we will see some of the simple cases and that will be interesting. For example, if del P del Z is more than dg sin theta, then what it means? It means that this is going to be a positive number or here this is going to be a positive number. In that case, what is happening? This upward push of the fluid has overpowered the component of weight of the fluid that tries to go down. And if we have a plus u1 and a minus u2, then the profile will be like this, a parabolic profile. Where is the vertex here? This is the vertex V. What is the coordinate? This is the coordinate of the vertex. Now, if I consider del P del Z is less than 
dg sin theta. What does this mean? This means that there is an upward push for some reason. What leads to this upward push in geological case? may be partial melting at the depth, the molten material due to buoyancy tries to move up, but at the same time this material itself tries to go down. Suppose the tendency of going down overpowers the tendency of moving up in that case. Suppose these are the shears plus u1 and minus u2, then the profile will look like this. It is a parabolic profile. So, where is the vertex here? This is the vertex. What is the coordinate? I have already stated the coordinate over there. Now, take a third case. If del p del x is equal to dg sin theta, what does this mean? This means that this term becomes 0 and note that the velocity profile in that case is no more a parabolic equation or a quadratic equation because this y square term and the entire thing goes 0 only this stays. In that case a linear relationship is found and if this is the case then what will happen? Say this is plus u1 and this is minus u2 and this is the line this kind of profile will be produced. A straight line will alter to another straight line. We have to understand thoroughly the velocity profile. Only after that we can do the strain analysis and linked with the velocity profile in different cases. So, the shear zone in the field, simple shear zone in the field, if we have the data of d, g, del p, del x by some means u1 and u2 by say geochronological dating, in that case we can have an idea what kind of velocity profile is there which is conceptualized, we do not see the velocity profile in the field, we do not see the parabolic geometry, parabolic fabric does not exist in the nature. So, linear fabric may be there, but in the shear zone a parabolic curve so far no one has seen. So, these velocity profiles in the geology the moment we think is a at best we can call as a concept. Okay. Now, back to the point. So, I have showed you the three cases 1, 1, 2 and 3. There can be other interesting things that can be demonstrated. Now, consider u1 equal to u2 equal to 0. That means, the boundaries are rigid. They do not move. They do not slide. Only there is fluid flow either upward or downward. A net upward fluid flow will happen if the dp dx sorry the dp dz is more than dg sin theta. In that case how the profile will look like? Now look at this velocity profile. I said suppose u1 and u2 are to 0. So, you can see that this term is 0 this term becomes 0 and then multiplied by that. So, entire thing is 0. So, what stays is uz is equal to this much, only this much indicates the situation when u1 equal to u2 equal to 0 and if dpz is dz is more than dg sin theta in that case the velocity profile will be a parabola and the vertex will be at the vertex will be equidistant from the two boundaries. Because if you put here u1 and u2 equal to 0 then you will find the vertex is getting this coordinate that the y coordinate has become 0, y ordinate becomes 0. What is, where is 0? 0 point is over here, y equal to 0 which is equidistant from both the boundaries. So, it is a parabolic profile. Now, if we think u1 equal to u2 equal to 0 and del p del z this has to be del we were dealing with del we were not doing d del p del z is less than dg sin theta. What will happen in this case? The fluid has a high stronger tendency to flow down and the boundaries are static. So, if you put u 1 equal to u 2 equal to 0 same thing will happen this 
term will come zero. Only this parabolic profile will be present, and the parabolic profile will go like this, and the vertex, the y ordinate will be equal to zero. Y ordinate equal to zero means that that vertex is equidistant from both the boundaries. So for u1 equal to u2 equal to zero, I can think of two possibilities which I have explained. Can we think of any other possibilities here? Let's consider a case when theta equal to zero. That means a horizontal shear zone. So I have considered theta equal to zero. If I put theta equal to zero, this will be simplified. For example, u z is equal to 0.5 multiplied by d p d z. Then this term plus this term will be there. So how the profile will look like? If this is your plus u1 and this is your minus u2, then this kind of parabolic profile will be produced, and here is the vertex v. Its coordinate is given over here, and we can actually find out. We can actually point out that the y ordinate of this vertex is positive. that's interesting and we will see why it is interesting now if we consider a case where theta equal to 0 degree and say u2 equal to 0 how the profile will look like we can think basically looking at the equation and it is easy to understand that means here is a marker line inactive marker before deformation this boundary is moved with a velocity u1 the bottom boundary is static that is why i am saying u to 0 and that to the boundaries are horizontal why because i have considered theta equal to 0 degree in that case the profile will look like this this point parabolic profile will touch the initial position of the vert of the marker touching the base and this is the profile here is the vertex v coordinate can be obtained from there now let's think about a situation when u1 equal to u2 equal to 0 and theta equal to 0 degree that means a horizontal channel where the boundaries are static in that case if this is the bulk flow direction this is the parabolic profile and here is the vertex and if this is the bulk flow direction then this is the parabolic profile so when u1 equal to u2 equal to 0 what happens these things vanish then theta will vanish and the equation actually simplifies in this case to uz is equal to we can look at that equation and write down okay and this is the well known poisseulli flow equation commonly in civil engineering book mechanical engineering book this has been called as poisseulli flow so in a more generalized case when the two boundaries are inclined not horizontal then the poisseulli flow can be deduced can be understood based on whatever i have said okay now we take another case theta equal to 0 degree and this effective this del p del z pressure gradient is also zero that means horizontal shear zone now comes to our structural geology textbook examples where this kind of arrow is there so this line will alter to that kind of line and in a geological case this line if there is an object it gets extended by shearing that is a chance that first it will be extended but then it will be boudinaged also so then the brittle deformation is induced within it and here we are talking about the continuum flow the fluid mechanics of ductile deformation and there we are not bringing the concept of boudinaging so if it boudinage it becomes boudin boudins then we cannot compare with the equation because some disruption has happened the brittle deformation has happened so this is as i said is the structural geology textbook example and in this case what is the equation of the velocity profile this inclined line uz is equal to 
And this term will become 0 and only this will be present 0.5 y y 0 inverse u 1 plus u 2 plus u 1 minus u 2. So, now we can see here for a Poissoli flow this is a velocity profile and for a coet flow this can be called as coet flow in the mechanics book this is the velocity profile. Now do you observe that this u z is equal to I can write in a different way I can write u z this equation say this is equation 1 then I can also write equation 1 in this way u z is equal to the u z coming from the Poissoli flow u z coming from the Poissoli flow component plus the u z coming from the coet flow component. So, this can be written and when u 1 and u 2 are non-zero the pressure gradient also is there in that case this entire equation will work. So, I hope you can understand that the entire velocity profile can be also looked in this way that it is the sum of the velocity profile for a purely Poissoli flow plus the velocity profile for a purely coet flow.